clubs and old-fashioned clubs. Get to Upside Bar and Lounge for the best clubs in town. Try all 10 varieties of Upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass. Grab the whole crew and pair it with Taco Night on Mondays or Whiskey Wednesdays. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Valley. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, care, and a great education. That's why I became a senator. I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. This is Adam Carricker on the ticket. Position right of the quarterback, out of the shotgun, first and 20, jailbreak screen in the air. It is tipped, it is intercepted by Carricker at the Missouri 21-yard line. Live from the heart of Lincoln, America, eight-year NFL vet and All-American defensive lineman, Adam Carricker. Shotgun snap to Everett. He's got the left arm going, and now he's got a hold by Adam Carricker. <laughs> Here's your host, Adam Carricker. Welcome everybody into Adam Carricker on the ticket. I am back. If you missed it on Monday, I was out. All right. So my son got contacts recently. And he's your typical 14-year-old kid who sometimes does or does not do what he is supposed to do when it comes to responsibilities and taking care of things and cleaning up things. Phenomenal kid overall, obviously. Obviously. But when we were up at Steamboat skiing for spring break, all right, he developed a pretty bad case of pink eye in both eyes. You know, I wore contacts for many years, and I hated them. I always, I've always had dry eyes. I've always had issues. I wore this... I, I about said stupid. I, I hated him when I was growing up. The old Horace Grant sports goggles when I was a kid. I clearly did not enjoy wearing them. So anyways, I had the sports goggles. I had the gigantic Steve Urkel glasses for way too long before my parents said, eh, maybe not. Then I wore contacts for umpteen years, about, I don't know, however long, you know, about a decade. And I had insanely dry eyes. But I've always been, I've had pink eye a million times in my life, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like Jacob. You better, you better not, you better clean your hands. You better take care of those with those eye drops. You better not touch me. Love you, but don't touch me for about eight days until those drops are over. Love you, don't touch me. So two weeks go by. It pretty much spreads through everyone in the entire family. Everybody gets pink eye in the entire family, except for me. I'm like somehow I avoided it, and I tell you what, I'm not a germaphobe. I'm not Howie Mandel. You can come up and shake my hand anytime you want. All right. But I was washing my hands like I was a germaphobe and I was Howie Mandel for about two weeks because I, I, I'm very susceptible to this and I freaking hate it. So I'm getting ready to come back to the former players practice last Saturday. I guess that was last Saturday. Time, fl- time flies. Huh? And the day before I'm going to fly out, my son Jacob looks at me and he knows I'm susceptible. He knows I, I've been trying to avoid it. He looks at me and goes, Dad, you got a little bit of stuff in your eye. I was like, ah, oh, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? The day before, I'm going to get on a plane, which I don't exactly enjoy. Yeah, put me in a giant metal box, thousands of feet in the air, going hundreds of miles an hour. Oh, by the way, um, I'm big. So, yeah, that's always fun. Um, So I start using the eye drops that all my family has used that night. And I use them the next day. So that was Friday as I travel. And I was just like, man, it's getting worse. Crap. You know, right as I'm flying, I'm going to go, you know, see a bunch of buddies of mine at the practice. And try to watch the practice, things of that nature. And it just gets worse throughout Friday, throughout the entire day. I wake up Saturday morning and it is way worse. And I'm just like, what is going on? It made no sense. Chatting with my wife. And so I had once had in high school, a allergic reaction to it's either gentamicin, neomycin, I don't know, eye drops. I had pink eye And the eye drops made it worse. And it was so bad. I had to be in a dark room with the lights. I was so light sensitive for 48 hours, two days straight, doing nothing because my body had to fight off the allergies before I could put something in to then fight off the pink eye. And so my wife goes, 
what kind of drops are those? And if we ever looked at them, not they're not whatever it was. I know the spelling, not the pronunciation. I'm not a doctor. Uh, you can almost read my handwriting, but I so I'm not a doctor. But I digress. And I'm I'm like I wonder if I'm having an allergic reaction. So on Saturday I go to the practice. Luckily when I'm outside, you know, even walk around the Hawks, I can just wear sunglasses. No big deal. So we have a former players lunch in afterwards, chat with some of the coaches and whatnot. And I'm like, man, do I wear the sunglasses inside? Do I pull a rock who just wears sunglasses inside all the time? I mean, you know, I'm almost as popular as the rock. <laughs> but I don't know if I can quite pull that off. So I did not. It was funny. I was walking around. Nobody said a word, but they like stare at my eyes because they were not normal at all. Not even close. And so long story short, had a great time visiting with a bunch of folks, seeing a bunch of things, meeting, you know, meeting people, seeing people I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, what I could see, which was very challenging. Um, and then it was funny because strength coach Corey Campbell, we were chatting and he was like staring at my eyes, but he went, he didn't say anything, but I, 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 I could just tell he was just like staring at him because they, they, they were weird looking and they were not easy to look through. So anyways, I digress. Sunday rolls around they get a little bit better. So I just stopped using the eye drops altogether. They slowly get better. And I'm like, wow, was it pink eye? Was it just allergic reaction? Was it both? So anyways, um, Monday, I could, I, it, it really wasn't great yet. Appreciate the boys filling in for me. Uh, so here's what I think happened. I think I never had pink eye. I think I took drops that I didn't need to out of fear of having pink eye. And then I pretty much had the symptoms of pink eye, if not worse. And it was all because of an allergic reaction to drops that I never needed to take because I never had pink eye in the first place. And, uh, yeah, so that was fun. But now I am pretty, pretty much look normal today. All right. So that's the story. That's the story of my non pink eye, pink eye experience. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we, we really do have a loaded show. As always, we should just start calling this the loaded show hour, the loaded show, the fastest hour in radio, whatever you want to call it. I've been calling it the fastest hour in radio. I'm going to be joined by Husker legend, former All-American, two-time Big 12, all-first team Big 12 performer, Jared Crick at 1230. Now, I reached out to my buddy, Bill Goldberg, say, hey, could you join me on Monday of next week at 1230? He sent back a thumbs up. So I think that means Yes. So I'm going to promote him because he almost always comes on anytime I ask him. Uh, I guess a thumbs up, you know, when I say, hey, does a, you know, does 1210, 1230, 1245 work? Just a thumbs up in return. I'm, I'm going to say he's coming on. And if he doesn't, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know what a thumbs up means then. But Jared Crick today at 1230, Bill Goldberg, 1230 on Monday. Okay. So today's show is loaded. All right. I'm going to be talking. So. I go on YouTube and I see this thing, Matt Rule embarrassed by Bill Belichick. And I think it was the Pat McAfee show, the headline. I didn't click on it. I didn't watch it. I was like, okay, you know, I know Rule's gone on a show for interviews in the past. Maybe this is another interview. I didn't really pay attention. I, I was busy. I was moving on with, about my day. And then I see Colin H Cowherd's talking about the same thing. Basically, Matt Rule embarrassed by Bill Belichick after like four and a half hour speech or whatever it said. So I clicked. I was like, all right, this is interesting. So I clicked on it. And I watched it. And I'm going to give some quick thoughts on that, a reaction to that. Also, Matt Rule's last two press conferences. I'm going to kind of go through the notes, give a reaction, thoughts to that. Okay, and then final thoughts on, I would have done this Monday. Obviously, just explain why I wasn't here. But final thoughts on the whole Scott Frost interview, what he said, what he didn't say, what he wouldn't talk about. You know, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But I would have done it, you know, like, what, three, four days ago. I guess I'll do it now instead. And then Daniel Kalen. All right, we got three quarterbacks in that room any of which could be starters in the fall. Now, I know most of the focus is on Dylan. I just did a whole video on how what his potential is. Okay? Daniel's looking good, catching people's attention. All right? Harburg's the only guy who's ever actually started with any experience. So, I think people are starting to notice Danny Dimes just a little bit. Do we have a quarterback controversy? Well, of course we should, because we should be having a quarterback competition because we don't know who the starter is. It's funny when I see that on social media. Do we have a quarterback controversy? Why would we not? And I don't know the controversy is the right word. Competition through and through. So, yes, that is the case. But I think people are starting to be like, huh, Daniel Kalen is, is doing pretty good in his own right. So I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show as well. All right. As always, the people segment, the last eight minutes of the show, send your questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, or otherwise. 402-464-5685. That's 402-464-5685. If you, if you just got a thought, I will read it out loud. Love the fan interaction here on 93.7, the ticket. All right. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to Bonzo Pools. And here's why. The family and I, moving back to Lincoln. 
and the kids, they really wanted the, like a pool. And so I reached out to a few pool companies in the area. They're all, they're all great. But when I spoke with the owner, Jeff Bonzel, he didn't just seem like a good businessman. He seemed like a good dude. Like he really did. And so he is going, he's going to be putting in our, our family pool and hot tub and things of that nature. And so I'm going to be kind of just, you know, sharing the process of that, uh, sharing the process with Bonzel Pools. Again, he just seems like a good dude, which is why I ended up choosing him. Okay. So we'll be, that's going to be going in throughout the spring, this summer. Okay. Maybe I'll share a few photos, things of that nature. But you can always check out Bonzel Pools at bonzelpool.com. They have swimming pools, hot tubs, saunas, slides. Okay. The hot tubs are pretty awesome too. If I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. All right. Bonzelpools.com. Let's light this candle. Let's dive into it real quick. All right. Looking at the last couple of press conference notes that I have, and this is actually from, I believe, two press conferences ago, and then we'll go with the most recent one. All right. Matt Rule, spring uh, ball press conference notes. He, wa he wants more former players to come back and visit. Okay. He's keeping the program about family, and that's really important to him. You know, I do get the feeling he legit wants former players to come back. Every coach says that. I mean, everybody says that. Nobody's going to say, hey, former players, you're not welcome. Don't come. Nobody says that. I do believe that he legit means it. Um, you know, so I think it was due to that former players practice on Saturday. There was a lot of people there for the coaches clinic. There was a decent amount of former players there. I think he'd like to see more guys come, come back. I think he means that. You know, full disclosure, um, not everybody – all the former players have always felt welcome over the years. I'm not going to dive into a bunch of this or that or whatever. You know, sometimes people come out and they say it in their own right. Sometimes I get messages, you know, uh, a lot of that was due to a previous staff or whatever the case may be, you know, so I do think former players being involved is huge. You know, if my son is ever recruited, the guy who needs to clean his contacts better and actually throw them out when the month is over because they're not year-long contacts. They're supposed to be changed every month. Love you, Jacob. But if he's ever recruited one day, one of the things I'm going to say, go ask a former player how they treat the former players because that shows you how much they actually care. Do they only care about you when they need you? Or when they're done with you, do they just kind of forget about you? There are some universities who do a great job at taking care of former players. There are some who did not do not. There are some universities where the coach does a great job and another coach comes in and it is not the case. So when Matt Rule says this, I firmly believe that he means it. I actually, one of those, so a bunch of Matt Rule uh, clips came up on that Pat McAfee show and some of these things I was watching this morning. And before he was hired at Nebraska, he had just been let go by the Panthers. The headline of the clip was what Matt Rule would do differently or whatever the case may be if he coaches again. And he talked about relationships. That's the number one thing that he would do differently. He, it was almost like when he first got to the Panthers, you know, it was a little bit more formal, a little bit more business-like, but then about, you know, maybe a year into it or whatever the case was, he, he goes, I'm going to go back to being coach Matt, go back to being coach Matt and build relationships. Okay. So I think he really means that. Now I will say this, if you mean it, that's awesome. If your actions follow through on it, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. That's what everybody wants. And everybody has to be treated the same. They're, everybody has to be treated the same across the board. Welcome back the exact same. Even if it's just one or two guys that are treated differently, people will notice and that will resonate. If you say, hey, everybody's treated the same across the board, but there's a blatant exception or two or whatever the case may be, people are going to notice that and they're going to cry BS. I'm just, I'm just saying that as a general rule. So for me, for my personal experience, honestly, you know, in the past, there was never any issues for me, myself, uh, myself and I, when it comes to this, I don't know why I said it like that. I kind of speak on behalf of some of the other players who text me sporadically over the years and kind of how they feel, you know, maybe they don't have a platform like night 3.7, the ticket or the character Chronicle. So I try to, I try to represent some of the other former players. If they send me certain messages, whether they're positive, negative, indifferent, whatever the case may be, if it's something I feel like they would want said, I'll, I'll share it on their behalf. So I fully believe the rule means that. I think that that is awesome. I think that that is huge. I think building relationships is a key core to it with your building a program with your current players, with your coaches, with your past players, with pr prospective players. Obviously, that goes without saying in recruiting. 
you know, but if you're going to treat everyone the same across the board, just make sure there's, there's no exceptions to that. Just a general good rule of thumb. Okay. All right. Now he talked about a lot of things he talked about in these press conferences. He mentioned that Nebraska's had big plays. They've had a lot of good things. That's not why there's been losses in the past. It's because of the lows, the fundamentals, the basic things, not getting, not getting fundamentally sound as certain things. You can have big plays, but can you play consistently by doing the little things, by doing basic fundamental things right? Because, in, you know, it's not, I don't know if you remember, we've lost a close game or two over the past few years, just every now and again. I don't know. It just seems to happen in Nebraska. It might be because those little things add up to big things over time. Okay. And that makes a difference in the win-loss column. All right. I got a comment coming in. Triple option. Great name, by the way. Love your content. I love that we have competition at the quarterback. It will push both players, and I would say all three players, but both both players to be better. I completely and utterly agree with that. All right, so some of the leaders that are emerging per Coach Rule, Isaac Gifford, Marcus Buford, Ty Robinson, Nash Hutmaker, and more. He even mentioned that Nash and, and Terrence Knighton kind of got into it in one of the practices because Nash wanted to go in, Terrence. Uh, didn't want him to go in at that point. I think they're being smart with Nash coming off a wrestling season. He lost a bunch of weight, okay? And so it it it, it behooves him. It's a fun word to say, behooves. All right. It behooves him to be smart during the spring and put that whatever weight back on they, they want him to put on, but do it in a healthy way. He just went through a football season and then a wrestling season. You know, let the body recoup and repair. I love that he's fighting to go back in and get reps. So the, the other thing is we know he's a good player. You can always get better, no doubt. But get those other guys some reps, too, and continue to build depth. All right. So Coach Belichick is a savant. He remembers everything Coach Rule said. He spoke with the NU staff for four hours. Okay. He, and when Coach Rule was, was fired, Andy Reid and Bill Belichick called him. Bill told him that NU was a good job. Okay. So it was interesting. Because the headline was a little misleading, which is why when the headline said Matt Rule embarrassed by Bill Belichick, the first time I didn't, I was like, what? You know, I just kind of ignored it. But then when I saw it again on two national shows, I clicked on it and it was a little misleading. Uh, so he said he was embarrassed by Bill Belichick, but you, you got to listen to everything he said. So he, he basically talks about how for four and a half hours, Belichick met with the Nebraska coaching staff. I mean, three and a half hours in. Rule was like, man, I got to use a bathroom break. Coach, you need a drink. You need a bathroom break. I got to go. And Belichick's like, no, let's keep going. I will say this. When I was trying to get back into the league, my agent texts me at 1.30 in the morning in March. Okay, in March. Spring ball hadn't even started. We're talking like March 1st. And the Patriots said no at that point in time. So obviously Bill Belichick and our mortal, en mortal enemies for life. No, I'm just kidding. But I get a text at 1.30 in the morning. And on like March 1st, March 2nd, Belichick watched the film. They're going to pass at this point, but they may bring you in later on. It's basically what that text said. Like, what NFL coach is watching film in March? Okay, just a month removed from the Super Bowl. You're not back for OTAs yet. Well, you know, evaluating players. You know who is? Bill Belichick. Okay, so basically Matt Rule said, Bill Belichick knows so much about the game, yet he can make it so simple. He can talk for so long. He remembers so many things. He can be a defensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, obviously eight-time Super Bowl champ, head coach, two-time head coach although that first run's a little debatable, and he could be an offensive coordinator. And he felt like he knew so much that Matt Rule was almost embarrassed how much he knew, like Bill Belichick knew. Now, what I believe Coach Rule was doing was trying to maybe over-compliment Bill Belichick. But their headlines everyone ran with was, Matt Rule's embarrassed by Bill Belichick. Like, Bill Belichick, what it made me think before I watched the clips is, Belichick got up on the stage and just embarrassed Matt Rule in some way, shape, or form. That's the image I had in my head, okay? Which, again, is why I didn't watch the clip to begin with. Now, that's not what happened. Basically, Matt's saying he's really, really smart. It's, it's almost embarrassing how much he knows. Well, it is embarrassing how much he knows. Now, the one thing I would say, I love Matt Rule's raw honesty. He is honest to a fault. He's very open. The one thing I would say is the, the attempt to compliment bill belichick the over complimentation maybe sometimes when you self-deprecation is a good thing especially if it's done with humor but to over compliment someone else and maybe over self-deprecate yourself that's why people ran with the headline that they did so i think to me that's that's why the headline was a little misleading not inaccurate but misleading you know and i love 
Coach Rule's openness and honesty. I would just say, remember at Nebraska, all due respect to Temple, all due respect to Baylor, you're going to get a lot more headlines. You know, so just maybe mind, mind some of those things. I mean, I'm not the head coach at Nebraska, for goodness sake. But I do have a show. So these are my thoughts on this show. A um, couple other things. Oh, we got a couple more fan comments coming in. Ken E. Can't speak for all the fans, but apathy had set in. In year three of Frost, things didn't seem to be improving. Rule had crushed my apathy. I am all in drinking the rule aid. And then he said, despite the record, I saw improvement, better tackling, less procedure calls, less mental mistakes. Hey, Kenny, I appreciate the comment. I think you're saying a lot of things that a lot of people are going to agree with. Okay. Now, a couple final thoughts on some of these press conference notes that I got here. All right, Jalen Lloyd is making some plays. Okay, now he's so happy with the way the staff is currently doing things. Marcus Satterfield and Glenn Thomas duo ship is allowing Coach Rule to be freed up to do things he likes to do, such as one-on-ones with players. Obviously, if those two are more involved with the offense, Matt Rule doesn't have to be as involved with the offense. Okay, you go to the most recent press conference. Running backs were talked about a decent amount, okay? He says, and I quote, I don't know why Ramir Johnson wasn't the feature back in 2022, end quote. Now, Ramir Johnson's always been a talented guy, a speed guy out of high school. I remember a a game on the road at Rutgers. He was maybe a freshman, a sophomore. Maybe it was the COVID season. He started, he played, and you could see he he played great. I feel like deep down in there is a great player that's waiting to come out that for some reason just hasn't come out. And hopefully, Matt Rule, this staff, is the staff that can bring it out of him. And what is a loaded yet banged up running back room? Ramirez banged up, games banged up. Okay, now he, Coach Rule did say he is pleased with Dante Dowdell so far this spring. Okay, so somebody's got to step up. He he does think the running back room will sort itself out in the fall. He mentioned as well his most recent press conference. I mean that makes sense considering half you know not half, but a lot of the guys are banged up right now. They'll be getting more reps in the fall. Okay. Let's see what else I got here. Justin Evans Jenkins is starting at guard, but taking reps at center with the twos. Again, it's still impressive that a young guy like that can not only play two spots, but one of those spots is center, which is a mentally complex position. You got to make the line calls, adjustments, all that stuff up front. He did that last year as a freshman, I might add. Going to do it again this year, starting as a guard, backup center. All right. In regards to Tony White, he said, and I quote, Tony will have his chance, end quote, but talking about being a head coach somewhere. I'm so happy for Tony. I am. But I don't want to hear that. (laughs) Even though we all know it's true, I just don't want to hear it. I just want to bury my head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend that's not true. And someday in the near future when we have to deal with that as Husker fans, we'll deal with that. I'm just going to bury my head in the sand like an ostrich right now. Uh, But I'm happy for for Tony and his success. I do know one of his goals is that they be a top defense in the country this year. And I'm going to ask Jared Crick about that at 1230. He said they haven't done anything yet, but he wants to, I think he said the number one defense. He wants to be the number one defense. Okay. And I love that. And I love that he's here with us right here, right now. All right. Coach Rule did mention wear and tear of spring ball is setting in, suffering some soft tissue injuries. Injuries are manageable, nothing serious. So this, every year I hear this. Remember all the years that we didn't have tackling in the spring game of Scott Frost? Okay. I, I, I didn't like that at the time. No need to re- revisit that. But I never, we had banged up guys then. And if guys are coming off surgeries, you know, like Gabe Irvin and Ramirez Johnson, I understand that. But the wear and tear of spring ball setting it is an interesting thing to me because they're hard practices. They're intense. But I believe they're only three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, for the most part. So you have more days off than you do on. I do know you lift and you're still trying to make gains in the weight room in between, maybe some days even after. When I did spring ball, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we scrimmage every Saturday almost. So I've never quite understood the wear and tear of spring ball, okay? Maybe I'm just missing something with that because you got to remember, when I was a freshman and retro freshman, we did two days every day until they said you couldn't do two days anymore. Then you went to two, one, two, one, and now you can't do two days. So for me, I'm just like, you're practicing three days out of seven. We used to do 12 out of seven, and then we always had Sundays off. So I don't know, maybe I'm just missing something. I'm not trying to say anything negative. It's just that's the po- thought that pops into my head. I will tell you, they're hard physical practices. Not every practice in two-a-days was as, as intense as a spring practice, to be fair. All right, to be fair. Looking at both sides of the coin, Coach Rule just said he's looking for separation at the quarterback position, only drives more competition. In other words, there's not a lot of separation, and he loves 
the competition he's getting right now. I get the distinct feeling. Okay, and I've heard people say it. That's why I get the feeling that they are very happy with where the true freshmen are at the moment, maybe even ahead of the curve, so to speak. I get that distinct feeling because that's what I heard. All right, let's see. I think that's all my thoughts for the last two press conferences from Matt Rule. Okay, and we will talk final thoughts on Scott Frost and Daniel Kalen pushing Dylan Raiola as well as Heinrich Harburg in that room as well. I'm never going to leave anybody out. Okay, but that will be after a chat with Jared Crick, Husker legend. Okay, here in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Tune in every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. for the Malone Radio Show on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Don't miss the opportunity to learn about the Malone Community Center's goal to eliminate multi-generational poverty in Lincoln and the surrounding area. It's the Malone Radio Show with Executive Director John Goodwin and Sports Director Mike Hunter every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Saturday, April 13th, versus the Atlanta Vibe at Gas South Arena in Atlanta. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Derek Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 5 p.m. with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas radio network. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today. We'll see lots of sunshine and light winds. Should be a beautiful day with a high around 70. Tonight, clear skies and a light breeze with a low around 47. And tomorrow, we'll see increasing clouds. A little bit breezy but warm and a high around 84. I'm meteorologist Kyle Tucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment. But don't go rush into your big box store. Play it Against Sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Play it Against Sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget, buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Play it Against Sports at 48th and Vine. The Double the Savings Sales event is happening now through April 22nd at Bonds All Pool and Spa. During this event, buyers can take advantage of up to $1,500 in savings and receive 0% APR for 60 months. Visit the Bonds All Pool and Spa showroom at 33rd and Pioneers or visit their website at bondsallpool.com to learn more about their hot tub sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. Whether you like fishing together or fishing to get away for the thrill of reeling in a big one or just going out to have a good time on the banks of your local pond, at a bend in a river, or on one of our many lakes and reservoirs, you'll always find the perfect place to cast a line here beneath Nebraska skies. Start planning your next fishing adventure today at letsfishnebraska.com. Sponsored by Nebraska Game and Parks, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Tanner's Bar and Grill is the perfect place to watch your favorite MLB teams this spring and summer, as well as Nebraska baseball. Enjoy Tanner's delicious hamburgers, chicken lips, and daily specials, and wash it down with one of their tons of options of beers. You'll never have an issue finding the game, as there are TVs everywhere throughout the space. So get in early and grab your spot and settle in for an afternoon or evening of baseball at Tanner's Bar and Grill, 30th in Yankee Hill. If you're a homeowner or a business owner, you have a lot of projects, and no one has an unlimited budget or time. Sunbelt Rentals makes all jobs less stressful with no need to purchase large equipment or hire a crew. You can do it yourself with rentals and everything from aerators and power rakes for spring yard work, to stump grinders, concrete mixers, tile saws, and more. Check out their inventory in Lincoln, north of Cornhusker Highway on 56th Street, or online at sunbeltrentals.com. Iron High Construction is hiring. 
they're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron Height Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron Height Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironheightconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. John Henry's has a brand new membership club to protect your entire home in one program. With a VIP and a deluxe option, we will help you find the plan that best fits your needs. Receive discounts on services and equipment, priority service, complimentary inspections, and so much more. Protect your home's plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical systems all in one membership. Call John Henry's to learn more. 435-5555, John Henry's Plumbing, Heating and Air, and Electrical. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? book clubs and quilting clubs nah forget that how about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs get to upside bar and lounge for the best clubs in town try all 10 varieties of upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass grab the whole crew and pair it with taco night on mondays or whiskey wednesdays upside bar and lounge at 29th and pine lake you're listening to adam Carricker on the ticket on 93.7 the ticket and the ticket fm.com Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Adam Carricker on the ticket. You're joining me for the fastest hour in radio here on 93.7 The Ticket. I got a phenomenal guest on the line, but real quick before I bring him on, if you missed it, earlier we talked about my reaction to Matt Rule's press conference, a couple other things, how I was an idiot, very nervous about getting pink eye, and basically gave myself a self-inflicted allergic version of pink eye. So if you missed that and you think that might be interesting, go back and check it out. Coming up at the end of the show. Daniel Kalen surprising some folks. Okay. Final thoughts because I hadn't given them yet on Scott Frost's interview. And then on Monday, okay, I am, I have a week ago, I talked about how I was going to give some, some thoughts on Nick Saban, uh, something he said a while back that did not happen last Monday. Today's show is loaded. It's evergreen content. I will talk about that on Monday and I will be joined per a thumbs up on a text. Hope that's what that means is a yes by Bill Goldberg on Monday as well. We're, we're good friends. So I trust him that that is what that means but now i'm excited for my my guest i'm going to bring on at this time now this man was a two-time first team all big 12 performer 2009 2010 first team all american in 2010 nebraska record holder for sacks in a single game with five versus baylor in 2009 20 career sacks all right and for the black shirts and he played half a decade in the nfl with the houston texans and denver broncos mr jared crick how you doing my friend what's up brother Dude, I am looking at an updated picture of you right now that Jake, my man Jake, just put on the screen. Shout out to Jake for doing a great job behind the scenes. And you look, you look sharp, man. You got a, a tie on, a suit on, the hairs, the grown out and comb. Dude, you're looking slim and trim like you've been working out. Dude, you look good. What are you up to lately? Oh, not a whole lot. We're back in our hometown of Cozad, um, selling insurance right now for a company called Farm Bureau. So, yeah, got to look the part. <laughs> You look good, man. So, all right. So, Tony White, there's 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 high expectations for this defense. A lot of guys coming back. Okay, Tony White is back. Everyone's excited about that. What did you see from this defense last year that allowed them to be so effective? And what do they need to improve on this year to continue to improve? Uh, well, I think being multiple obviously helped out a lot, right? I mean, just being able to come with different blitz packages from different, you know, lineups, you know, being able to disguise things different ways, obviously that helps. That's tough for an office to prepare for. My worry is going into this year is that, you know, other teams got a little bit of film on them. They're going to be able to prepare a little bit better. Um, so obviously our guys are going to have to come with better technique, um, I thought the tackling was pretty solid last year. I was pretty happy with that. Um, but obviously, they just got to get better, get stronger, faster. Um, really excited to see what the defensive line ends up doing. I mean, they're bringing pretty much everybody back. I'm really hoping that Nash, losing all that weight for wrestling, doesn't hurt him at all. I mean, there's something to be said about a zero technique being kind of a bigger guy. Um, so hopefully, you know, losing that weight, he doesn't drop any strength. So I'm excited. Um, obviously, the first couple of weeks, we'll uh, – you know, it will tell a lot. 
So you're actually one of the few people, maybe the first that I've heard anyways, to actually bring up the loss of weight as a potential concern for Nash. And it occurred to me as well. Hadn't talked about it a bunch. So it's a fair point to make. Now, the man lost, what was it, 40, 50 pounds, which is an incredible amount of discipline, hard work, hadn't wrestled in three, four years, goes out, makes it to nationals in a major collegiate uh, level, Power 5 conference in the Big Ten. Great season. Now, as you focus back to football, okay, he's got to put some of that weight back on. And I understand why they're limiting him in spring. I, I talked about that earlier, just the wear and tear of football than wrestling. Now, back to spring football. But... How hard do you think that'll be? And is, is there any legit concern by the time fall rolls around about him trying to put that weight back on after having lost it and gone through a whole wrestling season? See, I think so, just from my personal experience. So after my redshirt year, I was asked to gain about 35 pounds in less than three months, which obviously I was pretty close to doing, but it wasn't good weight at all. A lot of water weight I was carrying around, just a lot of bad weight just to get that, you know, that 275 mark. Um, so I'm hoping that that's not what they have him doing. I don't think they will. I'm pretty sure they're, I would think they would rather have him gain weight slowly, but have it be the right way to post to, Hey man, we got to get you back to the three thirty or whatever he was. Um, so I'd imagine it'll just be one of them deals. Now the key's going to be when he gets into season, once fall camp hits, I mean, you know, as well as anybody, it's hard to keep weight on. I mean, you're dropping, you know, calories, you're dropping, you know, fluids just as fast as you can put them in. So I think he'll be able to get up there, you know, pre-August 1, just right before fall camp. But the key's going to be, can he keep it on as the season goes on? Um, and that's just going to be one of them deals where, yeah, where it's just going to be, we're just going to have to find out real time. So, Kenny, you sent in another comment. He says, you look 25, Jared. So, you're looking good, my man. And if anybody else wants to send in a comment, question, thought, concern, or otherwise, I will let Jared know. All right, the, the, the phone number is 402. 402- Four six four five six eight five. That's four zero two, four six four five six eight five. I remember the most amount because we used to have to weigh before practice. Okay, during fall camp, two a days back in the day, and we'd have to weigh before fall uh, practice in fall camp, and then we'd have to weigh after. So if I was two eighty and I went down to two seventy five, I had to drink one Gatorade per pound of body weight that I lost. So I'd have to drink five Gatorades. The most I ever lost in one day. What, it was hot. It was on the turf. It was, I think it was a scrimmage, and I, I did not come out. I was a young guy. They said, figure it out, young man. You're going you're gonna to figure it out or you're going to die. I lost 12 pounds. I went from 290 pre-practice to 278 post-practice. Let's just say I was living in the bathroom with, with all the Gatorades that I had to drink. But as we start to look ahead to next fall, the defense, Tony White having the goal and then being number one, which why would your goal be anything else, okay? I look at some of their stats from last year. Pretty impressive. Number eight rush defense in the country, third in the Big Ten. Number 13 scoring defense in the country. Okay, the bat, we gave up a few yards through the air. Sometimes that was because teams knew they could throw rather than run against us. We were 40th in the country in pass yards allowed, and we were tied for 23rd in the country in sacks. So probably the biggest area they need to improve on is the pass defense. In your opinion, what's the biggest way that they improve the, the, the pass defense next year? No, I think the experience helps having a lot of guys come back. I mean, obviously losing the one kid, I think Newsom was his name. Uh, that's going to hurt. Someone's going to have to step in and uh, get some real meaningful reps this spring ball. Um, obviously having some, you know, veteran leadership coming back is going to help. Um, just experience in general helps with all. Uh, but if we can get a good pass rush just with the front three, three or four, whatever they're going to, you know, uh, align in, you know, just how they end up deploying that would be good. Um, yeah, if you can get pressure with three guys, you can drop eight. You're good. I mean, you're going to be good shape. So I think just the development of like guys like Ty, obviously Nash. I mean, they had some pretty good stats last year. Uh, and the, the young kids who are, I think, Lynn Hart and um, the others, if they can just, you know, consistently put pressure on the passer, uh, that gives Tony White the ability to do whatever he wants as far as coverage wise. He can, you know, show a bunch up front and then drop everybody back if he wanted. I mean, there's just a plethora of things you can end up doing if you're front four, front three, or getting pressure on their own. And that's one of the good things that made our defenses, you know, back in the day so good. I mean, you didn't have to dial up any blitzes. We could get to you with just four guys. So, and that gave so much flexibility to the guys on the back end where it say they didn't play the correct technique or, you know, they were a step behind where they needed to be. Well, I was fine because they were getting the ball out quicker than what he should have. And, uh, you know, we kind of maxed a lot of uh, a lot of deficiencies that way. So 
Uh, interested to see. I mean, but obviously Tony White knows these things better than anybody. It's not like I'm sitting here, you know, reinventing the wheel by any means. But just being a defensive lineman, watching predominantly defensive line during football games. Um, yeah, if those three can get after the pass or get, and not not just sacks, but batted balls, you know, the like. Just getting pressure, getting in the quarterback's mind. Uh, that's only going to help the, you know, the back seven, the back eight, um, get creative and, and do what they got to do. It's funny. As soon as I asked you, how do, how do they get better at defending the pass? I was like, you got to be kidding me. There's two defensive linemen talking here. The pass rush is going to get brought up at some point. So I love that you brought that up. And, you know, it's interesting for me, Ty coming back. Let's say Nash can get back to where he was. And he had, what, four and a half, five sacks last year as a nose guard and a three three five defense. That's yeah. crazy. Then you got Cam Ledhart coming back. Jamari Butler's going to be able to get after the quarterback. Let's say this defensive line is – as good as we believe it can potentially be in the fall. What what's going to be the biggest key to that? Because it's obviously we're playing in the Big Ten. You got to stop the run. You got to be physical. You got to be able to get after the quarterback in a three three five. You're going to stunt all over the place. You got feet, hat, hands. To you, what's the biggest key to this defensive line playing up to what is a very high potential and expectations in the fall? I think their depth's going to be key. Um, I liked watching a kid. Um, I forget his name, but James Williams, maybe. You know, I didn't. He was. I think he might have kept his red shirt. That I think he stayed under that four game limit. But just watching him get off the rock, I think. I mean, that dude's a first round talent, in my opinion. And the other guys may turn out to be as well. But he's kind of one of them kids that you know not a lot of people are talking about. I don't think, and that he caught my eye immediately. So just having those kind of guys where they can rotate in, where you know. Uh, I mean, I know Nash and, and Ty are kind of different builds from these other kids, but yeah, if you can just fill some guys in to come give them a blow, um, you know, and that's, I think that's one of the good things about a 3-3 three, three, where you're only, you know, throwing in three dudes at once opposed to four where, yeah, if you only got six guys who are game ready um, with a four-man front, yeah, two of those guys are going to be hurting after a while because obviously you flip in two for the other two. But if you have six guys game ready with a three-man front, obviously you can, you know, a whole new line change. It's almost like hockey. Um, so if they can just keep those guys fresh, one, keep them healthy going throughout the year, which obviously depth will help with. If you're not getting, you know, the snap counts, if they're not getting too outrageous, then, you know, you're going to feel a little bit, a bit better come, you know, November, December, you're going to be playing better football. So I think, yeah, just keeping that depth and, you know, and being consistent, obviously, like just, just keep getting better every day. Um, like I said, the talent's there. They just got to go out and execute. And I think, uh, you know, they got the leadership, definitely. And I think, like, they got the depth this year. So, like, these young guys who are, you know, pups, they were rookies last year and made, a, you know, they're essentially veterans now. So, they should be coming in playing with a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, whatever kids they end up bringing in, you know, rookie class or transfers, whoever hasn't had any meaningful snaps yet, will get them experience and then, uh, like I said, you can do a whole lot with the different combinations or, you know, if you just want to throw three glutes out there on first and second down, and then you want to bring in your speed guys on third down. Great. You have the ability to do it. So it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, you know, it's, it's as a defensive coordinator, I think you'd rather be in this position where, you know, you're not playing catch up. You can kind of throw your fastball every time. And, you know, when you want to throw the change up, well, you know, nobody's really expecting it. So it'll be a lot of fun. Excited. Dude, there was a lot of great stuff in there. Galoots, maybe my new favorite football term. Throw three galoots out. I love that. Throw, throw three galoots out there, dude. That was a great, great term right there. And James Williams, is. you are correct. It is his name is James Williams. He's got a great number, number 90, by the way. All right, man. So I know I – oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say not the worst number. <laughs> That's right. All right, Kenny sent in another question. This is a great question. What is better, 300 – I assume pounds at less than 10% body fat or 325 with over 10%. Now I, I will chime in real quick. 10% for a D lineman is crazy low, but I'll, I'll let, I'll let you take it from there, Jared. Oh uh, man, I've never been even close to 300. <laughs> That's pretty low. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, uh, yeah, anything sub 10, even sub 15, I think is kind of dangerous. I mean, yeah. Aesthetically, yeah, if you look the part, great. But I've seen a lot of guys who, you know, were probably 7% body fat who couldn't play a lick of football. <laughs> and, you know, it's the guys that kind of look a little bit, you know, some would say out of shape. Well, they're still moving as fast as anybody else, and they're stronger than everybody else. So, 
yeah, when it comes to actually playing, you know, in between the lines, like you want to just be at your bed now. I mean, yeah, granted, it'd be awesome to have a be rocking a six pack and, you know, all that. But I think, yeah, there's something to be said about having a appropriate body fat percentage, especially when you're, um, you know, playing a game like football. Yeah, look like Tarzan, play like Jane. So I think basically what he's saying, let's take the exact percentage out. Is it better to be maybe a little slimmer, 300, okay, maybe the body fat's a little bit lower, or think 335 knows Nash specifically, or would you prefer, if you were Nash, okay, let's say you're Nash Hutmaker, would you prefer to get back up to 325, but maybe the body fat's 15%, maybe a smidge more, maybe a little bit heavier, closer to 20, higher, I mean, closer to 20. So he's trying to say, is it better to be around 300 with a really low body fat or a little bit higher with not a crazy amount of body fat, but just maybe more? What are your thoughts on that? Right. At that position, as long as he can still move, I say the heaviest you can get, I mean, yeah, I pack it on, brother. Because, like, in this defense, in the Big Ten, you're going to be getting double teams a whole lot. So to have a lot of, you know, mass in there to, to hold your ground, and obviously the heavier you are, the stronger you're going to be in most cases. Um, so, yeah, if you can sit there and hold point and do all that, and if you need to get to 340 to do that, great. Um, you know, I was a doc guy that played undersized on the interior. So I played three tech in the NFL. There'd be weeks I'd be like 269, And that was not fun at all because you're still going to get a double team. You're still going to get this from guys who are weighing 340, And it's just so hard to play that position at that weight. So uh, I can 300 still a good weight, I think, but I think that's a good, you know, three technique weight in a four man front these days. I mean, you see, you know, three techs across the league now. I mean, when I played, they used to be, you know, 290 to 300. Well, now I'm seeing a lot of three techs at that 330 mark um, just so they can hold point on double teams. Then you see those guys like Will Fork, um, Ryan Pickett. I'm sure you know I played with yep. those guys. They were both over 350, and they wouldn't have had it any other way. I mean, they knew that they had to be at that weight to keep that strength and, the, and to be solid against, you know, double teams against, you know, a center and a lot of times an all-pro guard. So, uh, I think there is something to be said about, you know, that zero technique where Nash is playing. I mean, if you, and granted, but you got to be able to move. You can't be 350 and, you know, not being able to, if you're getting reached or scooped every two seconds, that doesn't help us out either. Um, so as long as you can get as heavy as you can while still able to play the position and, and be able to move, I mean, obviously I don't think there's really a limit to where, you know, there's no ceiling. You can get up to 350 as long as you can still move. That's the key to as long as you can still move. You're absolutely right. And I'm with you. I think specifically for Nash playing the 335 nose guard, I think 325, 330 is a good weight. He showed last year he can move at that weight just fine. I got one last question. Did you say 269 as a three technique in the NFL? 269? Yeah, I did. It was uh, oh. so in Houston, obviously, the, the problem was because it was always so humid. Mm -hmm. It was keeping water weight on. Like I said, you could pound, you could get every practice. I'd have to get two bags of IVs and then post practice. I'd have to get another two bags of IVs. Um, and I was still just hemorrhaging water weight. And then up in Denver, you're working with the altitude. So you're just mm -hmm. burning more calories than what you, you know, you expect to be. Um, so yeah, there was a couple weeks there rolling into, I mean, shoot, there was even a Monday night game. I just jumped on a scale out there in Oakland and the scale said, yeah, 269. I was like, well, and that was after, obviously, the pregame meal, after a pregame IV, and after, obviously, all the fluids and, you know, pregame snacks that you have beforehand. So I kind of knew from that point it was not going to be a fun game because we're going against guys like Kelechi Um, You know, that was when Oakland, you know, ran the ball quite a bit. So all pro guys at multiple positions. So, yeah, that was probably the worst game I ever had in my life. And, you know, rightfully so. I just – no energy, obviously not a lot of – not a lot of mass behind me, and yeah, you don't want to do that. So, dude, um, if you're 269, see, I'm envisioning you get up in the morning, you know, first thing you hop on the scale. If you're 269 at the end of the day, after everything you just mentioned, eating and IVs, man, you're, you're you're maybe 265. So, kudos for you to you for stepping on an NFL field in the interior at that weight. And you said it was a rough game, but man, just. <laughs> Being able to do that at all, it just blows my mind. That's, it's impressive, it, it, you know, it, when you just sit there and think about it, especially from my position. So, man, hey, it's always good to chat with you. I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for joining me, Jared. Yep, you betcha. I appreciate everything.
All right, that was Husker legend Jared Crick joining me on the Aloe Fiber VIP line. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be chatting real quickly, Scott Frost, and then Daniel Kalen seems to be surprising some folks right after this break. Step into healing at Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Our team of top-notch medical professionals turns pain into progress with state-of-the-art treatments and compassionate care. Visit prairieortho.com and discover the difference in quality orthopedic and plastic surgery services tailored to your unique needs. Your health matters and Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery is dedicated to helping you thrive. Reach your full potential. Embrace a better tomorrow with Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. The Double the Savings Sales event is happening now through April 22nd at Bonds All Pool and Spa. During this event, buyers can take advantage of up to $1,500 in savings and receive 0% APR for 60 months. Visit the Bonds All Pool and Spa showroom at 33rd and Pioneers or visit their website at bondsallpool.com to learn more about their hot tub sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill, open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Saturday, April 13th, versus the Atlanta Vibe at Gas South Arena in Atlanta. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Derek Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 5 p.m. with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas Radio Network. Hey, Nebraska, register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. If you've experienced a sports injury, joint, or back pain, Trust your care to Nebraska Orthopedic Center, a proud platinum partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Hi, it's Charlie Stone back with the latest update from Andy Goodyear of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, your new car selection keeps getting better and better every month. Can you tell our listeners all about it? You know, it sure is, Charlie. It's great that our customers can come in, pick out a new Honda, and drive away with it that day. How many new Hondas do you have in stock? Well, right now we have just about 100 in stock. Hey, I hear you've won some very important awards in your service department. Tell us about them. Well, the first one is we won the award for the first fixed award. So the cars are actually fixed on the very first time they're brought in. Second award is our customer service experience award. And then our third award is our Honda Express Service Elite. And we rank the best in quality and customer satisfaction. Maybe it's time you come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. 
Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM first. 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Boom. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Adam Carricker on The Ticket. All right. You got about seven, eight. Maybe nine minutes, all right, depending on how long we go here to get your final thoughts, questions, thoughts, concerns, or otherwise, 402-464-5685. That's 402-464-5685. Dion Pryor writes in, says, pass the damn ball. That's not something you hear all the time, but he did put three laughing emojis with it. So I think it's his opinion, and I think he's serious. I appreciate the comment. All right, final thoughts real quick here. Again, I would have done this. You know, a few days ago, but here we are. All right, final thoughts on Scott Frost's interview. Basically, he said, and I quote, he's dying to coach again, end quote. He's learned a lot. Now, he would not answer any questions specifically about Nebraska. And that's actually what caught my attention more than anything. And I had someone tell me, well, what's he supposed to say? No matter what he says, it's it's going to be taken as negative and it's, it's going to be twisted and, and turned. And I'm, I don't, I just, I don't agree with whatever he says because what if he had come out and said, hey, things didn't go well. Things didn't go right. There's some things that I thought I did well. Obviously, things I, I didn't do well, and I own that. What if that was it? I think that that would be received about as well as anything, especially just not answering the questions. So for me, just taking that ownership, because I don't know that he's ever, ever done that. Okay. So for me, that's something that, that could have happened. And I don't think it's, you know, everyone knows it didn't go well. That's not not reinventing the wheel there to say something like that. So just taking ownership. I think that's something he could have done, but you know, it is, it is what it is. I was asked by that same person. Well, Husker fans ever root for Scott Frost. I thought that was interesting because there's going to be a large portion of Husker fans that just never root for him. They just will refuse to root for him. There are some who will root for him right now. And then there's the, those people who just kind of, kind of see how things play out. Now, personally, I think Scott Frost would be a great offensive coordinator. Because if you looked at the X's and O's of his offense, we had guys open. We had receivers open. Okay, they were missed. We had drops. The scheme was there, especially at the start of games. What was missing was the halftime adjustments. What was missing was the relationships with the players and getting players to buy in and developing players. Think about all the players that came and left. I had Luke McCaffrey on a week ago, and then you talk, think about Wandell Robinson, Maurice Washington, yada, yada. Okay, don't need to go down the whole list. He brought in really good, talented players. Okay, he had a great scheme. The head coach is the CEO of the entire thing, and a lot of that revolves around relationships, and that's where he struggled. But as an offensive coordinator, he could eliminate a lot of that, recruit X's and O's, and I think he'd be great at that. Now, will Husker fans ever root for him? I think personally it de depends on the situation. I think with Frank Solich going to Ohio, which is, I mean, I no disrespect, it's a step down from Nebraska, okay, at least a step down. And there, he wasn't really competing with or against Nebraska, so it was easy to root for him. Whether you thought Sully should have been fired or not, topic for another day, talked about in the past. But I think it was easy for Husker fans, especially over time, to root for him. So if Frost, you know, has a similar situation, or if he becomes the offensive coordinator at a Big 12 team, I think he'd be easier to root for. If he ends up at a Big 10 school that we're playing every year, that's going to be a challenging situation, I think. I do think over time, you know, it will start to be viewed a little bit differently. Okay. And if there's... You know, he ever comes out and says, hey, I wish I'd have done things better. That would speed up that process. All right. Will he ever, this was the last question, then we'll move on. Will he ever come back to Nebraska like Frank Solich has? That's an interesting, that's the most interesting question to me. Because, and I know some Husker fans completely disagree with me right now. Utterly disagree. I don't think it'll be for a while. Like Frank Solich actually came back, I believe in 2017, it was 15 years. And then he came back for the spring game last year, roughly 20 years or so when he was officially honored in front of everybody. I, I don't think it'd be that soon for Frost, but 20, 25, 30 years. I mean, he'd be in his seventies. I do think the invitation will eventually be extended over time. You got to think how far down the road that is and how much the world's going to change by then. I just, 
I wonder if Scott Frost would accept the invitation because I, I know, you know, there's some, some hurt feelings on both sides and he's got some too. So um, those are my quick thoughts. Some of the questions that I had received after that interview came out. All right, Daniel Kalen, pushing Dylan Riola. I'm not surprised. I have been saying since day one, we need a true quarterback competition. I know everyone says that. But then in the back of everyone's mind, all right, what's Dylan Raiola going to look like game one? Not everyone's mind, but most people I talk to. I'm talking three-time national champs. I'm talking Nebraska fans that are celebrities. And when they hear me say, I don't know who's going to start game one, they look at me like I'm BS crazy. Like they do. Like everyone says the right things, but let's be real. In the back of a lot of people's minds, no, it's a done deal. It's Dylan. And then here comes Danny Dimes just doing his thing, an elite 11 quarterback, a guy who's conducted himself with class, a guy who's done nothing but show love to Nebraska the minute there was a spot available came. Dylan comes back. He stays. Hey, it's all good. Helps recruit the peer recruit the recruiting class. Doesn't say a word. Doesn't complain. This is a guy that was at a top 10 school last year, football school last year, won a New Year's Six Bowl game, won 11 games. They're projected to win 9, 10, 11 games again this year in Missouri. Just goes about doing his thing. Oh, by the way, at the Elite 11 quarterback uh, camp that he went to, he placed in the top half in every competition they had, and he even won one, I believe. I believe it was the accuracy, but I have to go back and double-check that, the accuracy competition. I'd have to double-check that one. Don't be surprised. Okay. Uh, a couple more comments have come in. Ken E., it is interesting how the last couple of years we are more interested in receivers than running backs, or they get the press. Because we've had loaded running back rooms, okay? We actually had a good running game last year. It's like, who are the receivers? Who's going to step up? Isaiah Nayor looks the part. Jamal Banks is probably the one guy that everyone looks at and says, hey, that's the guy we expect to make the biggest impact of the transfer. Malachi Coleman. Dude has NFL talent written all over him. Jalen Lloyd, elite speed. But who's going to step up and actually be the guy? It's the same way in the running back room. Right now, I think that'll sort itself out. I don't want to say fairly easily, but a little bit easier in fall camp. I think we just haven't had a guy, Trey Palmer, I know, but outside of Trey Palmer in recent memory, I struggle to think of many guys who've stepped up, okay, at the wide receiver position to be a distinct playmaker, all right? All right, Zach messages in and said, I don't mind if Tony White leaves NU after our next natty. Hey, dude, if we were on Twitter, I'd retweet that. I would retweet, I'd wait like two hours, unretweet, then retweet it again, or was it repost on X, whatever. I can't get on X without like 5,000 pieces of porn being thrown right in my face, which is why my kids will never get on X. I know some people love that. I got kids, so I got a different perspective. All right. And I do think, my final thought, and we'll get out of here. I do think Dion Pryor says again, Danny is doing great. Love it. Love it. They're still true freshmen. Don't know what we're going to get come the fall, but I think right now, I think the coaches believe that they're ahead of the curve at this moment in time right here, right now. There's going to be mistakes made with young quarterbacks. That's just what it is. But, man, the talent, the ability, and if we can just play better than we did last year as in take care of the ball at the quarterback position, catch snaps, execute handoffs, not snap the ball so it hits the guy in motion. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. If we can just do those things, we'll be better. All right, final thought. And I mentioned this in my most recent character Chronicles. If you want to go back and check it out, you can. I talk about Dylan Raiola, specifically his talent. I talk about Daniel Kane, and at the end, I said, there's one guy on this team who may be, I don't know about the most important player on the team, but one of the most important players on the team, and I don't think people realize, and that's Heinrich Harburg. And here's why I believe that. And I'll repeat what I said on that show here, and I'm okay with that. Because Heinrich Harburg is the only guy in that football building who can talk to Daniel. If, if Heinrich isn't starting, okay, if he is, awesome. If he's not, he can talk to Danny Dimes. He can talk to Dylan Raiola, whoever the starter is, and tell him exactly what it's like. And then he brings a weapon to the table. Neither one of those guys really do, and that is his feet. He's a Swiss Army knife, the Taysom Hill, this Nebraska football team. You can have your own unique package just for Heinrich Harburg, which will give the defense more things to defend, yet shrink what Dylan and Daniel have to learn. And then if there is struggles in a game, you know, true freshman might struggle at a point at some point in the game <laughs> if they do start. You can throw him out there. You can run that package. You can give your starting quarterback some time to breathe, recoup, gather himself, whatever the case may be. So he's a guy who can be a leader. He's a guy who has Nebraska football in his blood, and he plays like it. He's a guy who can create 
more headaches for defensive coordinators on the opposing teams. He's a guy that you can put in the game if your current quarterback, who's a young guy, trying to figure out how this, this earth of college football works, as talented as they are, may need a breather, you can put him in. He may be the most important guy in the team that nobody's talking about. Not enough, in my opinion, anyways. All right. It doesn't hurt that I just like the kid a lot in the way he plays. All right, Kenny, last comment of the day. We'll get out. Just don't turn the ball over, and that is four more wins. Hard to argue, my friend. <laughs> kind of what Matt Rule said. This is the little things. All right, until next time, have a great weekend. Go Big Red. And always remember to throw the ball.